Okay, this will be an example to illustrate how you would calculate a weighted average. So we've got Riley's Pebbles dog food inventory. And this is the purchases we've had for a month as well as the beginning inventory. So we start off with 20,500 pounds and uh, we know it cost $1.59. Uh, that's the value per pound. That's the beginning weighted average, the best way to think of this at the time. Uh, then on the 3rd of October, we purchased 5,200 pounds at $1.65. We made another purchase of 3,150 pounds at $1.72. On the 12th, 2,500 at 2.24, and then 1,100 more pounds at 2.10. So if we wanted to compute uh, the weighted average, what we would do is multiply this cross. Right, so let's take 20,500 times the dollar 59. All right, and then using that same formula, I'll format this so we get it into dollars here. We don't need cents. We could use cents though. I'll put them back. Okay, and then if I just copy this formula down, the easiest way to do that is just to double click here. We've got all of these. Uh, values of inventory. Okay, I'll format that there. Okay, so let's calculate our total. So our, or totals, I should say, our total pounds, I'll just use the sum function, right? Just sum this above. 32,000. 450 pounds, and the total value of inventory, the sum from above, 54,503. So if you wanted to calculate the average cost, and this is a weighted average because the impact of that 20 pounds has a greater influence on the average cost than smaller amounts. Okay, so that $1.59 is associated with a greater percentage of the full 32,450 pounds than these other amounts. So that has a, a weighted factor or a larger factor. The one that's gonna have the least impact on the average is this one because because we only have 1,100 pounds. All right, so all I really need to do is calculate the average. So I'll just do that here. So the average cost per pound, uh, this way. We will take 54,503, divide it by 32,450 pounds, and I get $1.67. We'll round that is $1.68. So if we were to move this here, so you can sort of see where it lines up, Right, it's not it's hard to justify putting a line here because we're not summing it or not averaging it. Right, so I'll just leave it there, and you can sort of see that we had these differences in prices, but that dollar fifty nine tends to keep it from rising substantially. You know, the two twenty four and the two ten. Are quite a bit more than the dollar fifty nine, but because twenty thousand five hundred pounds go into it, we've got a much greater impact on the average cost per pound. In fact, if you wanted to know what was the impact of these on the final, you could just calculate the average, or excuse me, the percent of the total. Take the thirty two five ninety five and divide it by fifty four thousand five hundred and three. Turn that to a percentage, right? And if we lock that in and then bring that down, you can see all the various averages. Now, if we sum that, we should get 100%. Okay, so you can see that in coming up with this weighted average, the 20,500 pounds from beginning inventory has a 60% impact on the total weighted average. Probably the best way to uh, think about that.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this one back again, if I can, to where it was. And that's my brief illustration of um, how you would calculate an average, a weighted average.